Hello, everyone. Okay. So uh, I'm Josh Gao from Alibaba. So today, I, I think it might be quite late before we are introducing the uh, architecture rather than we have many previous talks introducing the detailed technologies. But uh, this talk is about uh, the Alibaba HPN 7.0, the topology for uh, our large language model training jobs. So um, I think, I believe you guys have uh, heard this, uh, seen this uh, figures for a long time. So over the past years, we've seen a great advance in the large language model uh, field. It is estimated that the transformer size has grown uh, 750 times uh, every two years. Uh, in contrast, hardwares are uh, struggling to keep up. Moore's law only gives uh, twice the performance over the same time period. So therefore, in the age of LLM, for tech companies, the um, exascale computing power is the core competitiveness. And uh, the competitiveness comes from the accelerator scale up and scale out. So however, achieving such an extra scale computing power is not as simple as building a large scale accelerator cluster. So if we naively increasing the scale of the cluster without carefully redesigning uh, it, the achievable performance might drop and uh, the linear scaling efficient decreases as the scale goes up. This is because the LLM training workload uh, brings new challenges that we haven't seen in a traditional data center cluster. So we've seen this, fi uh, this figure repetitively over the past uh, few talks, but here's a snapshot, again, of the NIC traffic in the LLM training workload for two minutes. We can see that there are several new characters uh, from uh, compared with the traditional data center workload. So first, the traffic has really low entropy, which means one NIC, traffic, uh, one NIC only sends with more portion of hosts uh, rather than uh, like a high connection count that connects to a uh, majority of the servers in the, uh, in the entire cluster. So the secondly, the traffic volume is high. We can see that during the active phase, the traffic takes the entire 400 gigabit per second bandwidth. So this creates high pressure for every component connecting the source and the destination, including the switch, uh, the NIC optical modules, link, and the uh, switches. So uh, thirdly, the end hosts are globally synchronized, which means this entire cluster experiences such on and off pattern. And lastly, one training job is large scale and long lasting. So which means the previous uh, stated the stress test will last for weeks or even months. So if we directly apply this workload to a general purpose compute cluster, it will cause two major issues. So first one is because the um, tr traditional data center cluster uh, has a really regular topology and because uh, this traffic's low entropy behavior, um, it will cause a lot of hash imbalances. This will cause low link utilization and a longer flow completion time, which slows down the entire training job. And also because the training job is globally synchronized and stress tested, the entire cluster is prone to failures which means the training job will be frequently restarted and the entire cluster's availability is low. So after studying the challenges and understanding why previous solution does not apply, we here present how Alibaba builds the large scale accelerator cluster to achieve the exascale computing power. And we, and we believe there are two key solutions. The first one is to provide a consistent high performance interconnect. So to achieve this, we build HPN 7.0, which stands for the seventh generation of high performance network. It's a predictable network, uh, data center network in the AI infrastructure. We specially designed the data center architecture to, to overcome the drawbacks uh, I have just presented previously. So there are a few key words for the HPN 7.0 topology. So firstly, HPN 7.0 is a two tier topology. So here we have a collection of accelerator servers in the cluster. We only connect them using two layers of switches. So compared with the traditional three-tier topology, HPN 7.0 is able to provide lower latency and the lower hash complexity, which achieves higher performance and the simpler path selections for the transport layer protocols and also re reduces the maintenance, monitoring, and debugging complexity. 
HPN 7.0 is also a multi-rail topology, which means each accelerator connects to one dedicated switch in the first year. For example, we can see that the orange, um, the orange accelerator in each server all connects to the orange switch, and uh, the green accelerator all connects to the uh, green switch. So in the first tier, different, uh, uh, sorry, uh, let, me, let me go back. So in, in, the, in the first tier, different rails, they are uh, completely isolated. Uh, this um, design leverages the scale up network within each server. Uh, to uh, for the interconnect and to maximize the fan out of the first tier network. This design also maximizes the scale of the one hub network that removed, completely removes the congestion and hash collision. So specially we named the first tier network uh, is a segment. In a segment, all the accelerators on different servers with the same index are directly connected in the scale out network and all the accelerators in the same server are directly connected in the scale up network. Therefore, there's no hash collision or congestion between the accelerators within the segment. The second tier switches um, provide inter-segment uh, connectivity. Uh, it can either connect in a full mesh uh, fashion, which maximizes the bandwidth resource between the segments, or connect in a real rail-only fashion, which maximizes the scale of the topology. And HP 7.0 is also a dual plane topology, which means that each accelerator server are connected to two separate networks that are completely isolated from each other. For example, in this figure, we can see that each accelerator connects to the orange and green network at the same time, but these two networks are not interconnected. This further increases the scale of the topology and also provides the redundancy since one plane can be the backup of the other. So at last, HPN 7.0 is a front backend network topology, which means that the CPUs and accelerators are all isolated in, in the network. This avoids the interference between the CPU traffic and the accelerator traffic, and further increases the performance of the communication between the accelerators. So as for the scale, HPN 7.0 is able to uh, connect up to 130K accelerators, we use a 51.2 terabits per second single ASIC switch for maximized simplicity and robustness. Since each, each accelerator requires two times 200 gigabit per second bandwidth, HBN 7.0 can support up to 1024 accelerators per segment. Uh, for full mesh second tier topology, HPN 7.0 is able to support uh, 16 segments. And for a real only second tier topology, HPN supports up to 128 segments, uh, which translates to more than 130K accelerators. So in the end host, uh, we also introduce a non-stack dual tour solution. So from the operating systems perspective, there is only one bound device connecting to both planes at the same time. There is only one IP Per, uh, for the two planes, and the switches and the NICs communicate with each other to ensure fast switching and their failures. The traditional stacked dual tour solution requires a uh, creates a strong dependency on synchronization and requires a direct link between the two switches, uh, which violates our dual plane design philosophy. Uh, we, de implement, we developed a non-stacked dual tour solution um, uh, to, uh, to achieve uh, this, uh, to kind of implement our philosophy, yes. So we deeply collaborate with our switch vendors to uh, implement a customized LACP modules. And uh, uh, so connecting all the designs together, we achieve no single link failure uh, disconnects accelerators from the network. So here shows the performance curve when the link failures and link flapping happens during our production network. We can see that on the left we have, uh, so each, uh, each curve uh, has a dual tour and a single tour solution. So we can see that compared with a single tour solution, our dual tour um, solution greatly reduces the uh, impact of network anomalies uh, in the overall training job. So here is how we build the consistent high performance interconnect. And the second, key, uh, the second key to achieve the exascale computing power is Computation and the communication co-optimize. 
So the co-optimization uh, starts from the hardware. In HPN 7.0, Alibaba in-housely designed and developed hardware for customization, fast iteration, and stability. We designed our own uh, 51.2 terabits per second switch, improve its cooling solutions. I think we have just, uh, uh, just had a talk uh, this morning. We also developed our own 200 and 400 gigabit per second optical modules. Uh, we also designed and developed our own programmable NIC to implement our own high performance transport layer protocol. We also optimize our software stack uh, and transport layer protocol for the optimal performance. We develop Alibaba's own collective communication library called Echo, which is a globally coordinated and topology aware collective communication library that is specially optimized for our topology. It provides better performance and stability than uh, alternative solutions. We design and develop Sola, which is a high performance multi pass transport layer protocol that is able to leverage the abundant path and saturate all the links in the topology. As for the switch, we customized uh, an Alinos, which, is, uh, wide which provides a white box hash function and pack uh, uh, path selection functionality uh, to the transport layer protocol to minimize uh, the potential hash collisions in the network. We also developed the Nimbus Container Network, which provides an IPv6 based low overhead uh, virtualization and multi-tenancy functionalities to our customers. For the, manage, uh, for the management stack, we built a platform for AI, Pi, that is able to perform topology-aware job allocation, scheduling, and communication computation overlapping to maximize the overall efficiency for the entire training cluster. Also, we provide a host and network co-design management system for fast failure detection, localization, and mitigation. In Echo, we deployed accelerator servers hand and slowness detection and the localization. Um, it can detect servers that are slowing down the entire training cluster in real time. In the transport layer protocol, we provide a fast rerouting mechanism under transient network congestion and short-term link failure scenarios to maintain its high performance. So in the switch, we provide high precision network monitoring and failure detection mechanism to provide uh, instant feedback from the network to the end host. So in the container network, we provide a we designed host monitoring and end-to-end -end connectivity probing monitor to query the network from the server's perspective. As for the management platform, Pi provides a centralized fault detection, localization, isolation, and fast job, job recovery mechanism so that when failure happens, the faulty machine is quickly removed from the cluster and the job is resumed. So summarizing all the aspects up, HPN 7.0 provides generation leap in performance and stability. From the CCL's perspective, HPN 7.0 is able to increase its performance by up to 100%. As for uh, training jobs in different scales, HPN 7.0 is able to increase the training throughput by 14.4%. HPN 7.0 has been deployed in production uh, has, and already shown its superior performance and stability. According to our online measurement, HPN 7.0 provides 96% linear scaling efficiency, 98.22% cluster availability, and is able to continuously operate for more than three weeks uh, and is able to recover from failures in just minutes. So uh, this is my last page. Uh, this journey never ends. So thanks to all the hard work from Alibaba's engineers and developers, uh, we are able to provide superior linear scaling efficiency up to 10,000 accelerator cluster. But if we continuously increasing the scale of our cluster, the existing solutions might need further optimizations to continue such a trend. So in order to achieve this, uh, we call for talent people and close partnership from our vendors. So thank you for listening. Questions? All right. I don't see any questions. So maybe we can quickly go up there. Yeah. One. Oh, is someone else in line?
Yeah. So one of the th uh, interesting takeaways from the paper, and I think like your other networking at scale talks and this talk, is um, you know having multiple ports or multiple n ports on the NIC and essentially being able to instead of like fail, um, get degraded throughput and then recover back when when you have things right. Um, and you know, there's some claims about some of the experimental, some, some of the models that you ran with and, and the amount of degradation you saw, right? Uh, but isn't that subject to the amount of compute comms overlap? For example, if there, there may be some other jobs, uh, other kinds of jobs, for example, recommendation models, where the amount of exposed comms is like 60% or 70%, yes. where it's maybe a better idea to actually, if, if a link is slapping too much or, or it's down, uh, instead of like continue training on one link, you essentially degrade and and um, reboot and, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is more like a. Um, I think you can uh, hide a problem and fix it before. Uh, so this is more like uh, the overhead, right, on, on one side or the other. So usually the port down is not a link failure; it's more like a module failure. So you can hot swap it. In any in, in majority of the cases, right? So if you reboot it, if it's a small model that is, um, let's say, in a training job, maybe I think uh, what you just mentioned, this kind of job, maybe rebooting takes minutes, right? So so the this kind of uh, minute level down compared with a uh, let's say five minute level slow down, right? But not not completely down, maybe like slowing down by random number twenty percent. Right, so so this kind of thing, uh, this kind of comparison, maybe one solution is better than the other. But in the, in any sense, this is uh, what we're as a networking team, right? What we're trying to do is provide a, uh, um, let's say GPU is GPU job is running is always better than rebooting everything because in majority of the times rebooting triggers a lot of failures. It involves many components, and when one component fail it's uh, going to be a disaster. But in the majority of cases, when the job is started, there's only one job uh, that is running. You don't need to care about the management spec, you need to call about, uh, talk about the monitoring or the allocation and stuff, stuff like that. So things will be more stable. So from our uh, perspective, I think architecture provides resiliency is what we should do. But if they decided to bring down their job, then that's their, uh, then that's their choice. They can, they can still do it. <sighs> So Hi, this will I be quick. Uh, Gene Bosman with uh, Cloud Architects, always interested in the database aspect, and I know you're networking in the yep. database, but if you're running database jobs and they transcend, they're in a cluster, some kind, um, do you then, when there's a, a drop, do you take a snapshot checkpoint or do you persist the state so they can pick it up later? That's my question. Oh, I think you're talking about like um, co-design of network anomalies and uh, this kind of training oh, cluster. Well, what would right? you do? You showed a number of ways in which you prevented the yes. drop from taking everything down, yes. but it may affect database processes. And then I was just asking, do you take, if we're in the middle of some kind of database work, do we freeze the state and pick it up later, or do we, I see. or do we, uh, you know, I take see. a snapshot checkpoint? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think uh, I want to double check one one thing because we were talking about when the network fails, you might lose some kind of unsaved progress this, to the database. Uh, well, it might cause a discontinuity. And yes. You might have to restart, as you said. But I, I'm wondering why the, uh, probably the application should guarantee the transaction is either fails or succeeds. Yeah, right? I guess so. Yeah, so databases are databases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Postgres, Oracle, that kind of thing. Yes, yes. Well, I think it's a good candidate that we mm -hmm. can we can indeed try to uh, have some kind of notifications mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. the end host. Because what we are trying to do is more like a transparent approach yeah. that the application is not if because we are using bounding devices, mm -hmm. the application or even the operating system doesn't know one link is down because the other. Oh, oh, okay. They wouldn't yeah. know. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, we're at time. I recommend please talk offline. Thank yeah, you. We have a lot of engineers yeah, here. We can appreciate talk more. Thank you.